water. I've been eyeing this spot we're going to for quite a while now. When the conditions aren't right, the conditions aren't right. And today we have a low avalanche danger. Uh, it's gotten cooler again. We just had a warm period uh, with a lot of wet slide activity and things have seemed to firm back up. And um, we're not really sure if it's gonna be too firm today to really commit to some of these lines, but we're hoping for a little sun uh, maybe some corn action later in the day. We brought repelling gear uh, in case we need to repel onto some of the lines we're gonna try and ski. So yeah, we're just, first we just gotta make it up the trail. Uh, it's probably gonna be pretty icy and the sleds are gonna overheat. I'm sensing that right now. But that's just part of the deal, it's spring riding. We are about two miles in and we're already experiencing overheating problems with the snowmobiles. It's just gonna be like that until the sun comes out and it gets a little warmer. We have arrived at our zone and to our surprise or to honestly what we expected is a little bit of fog covering where we want to ride and we're gonna have to wait for this fog to clear if we're gonna ride this because it's consequential terrain and we definitely want some visibility so we're gonna start skinning up see what happens see if this fog clears got a little bit of snow coming down Got some dust on the crust, but if this clears up, it could be pretty good. Clouds are coming in and out. Viz is not ideal, but we're getting our windows. So our current plan is to scan up to the ridge line and traverse the ridge, suss out a couple of the lines we were looking at, see if we feel comfortable riding them. And if not, we always have the option of taking a lower angle route down. But we don't know until we get up there if this will go. Slightly on the fence about it, but it's looking decent. There's just a lot of roller balls. A lot of previous wet slide activity from our warm weather last week. We are cruxing out right now. Had to take off the split board and the skins and we switched over to ice axe crampons throwing on the harnesses getting prepared to make our way towards our line see if she'll go got some weather rolling in and out really fast you can see all these clouds all the snow it's just been grapple then clear then grapple a little bit variable but it's cool being kind of on the edge of this range seeing the whole valley and all the weather moving in on us. And like, that's 100% corn ice. Oh, for sure. So like, you can't come in from there. I don't think this is our entrance, man. I don't know, it's, there's too much up in the open, too much up in the air about it. 
I think that side entrance might be the one, but then we can't really see if it's a clear shot. From below, it looks like it though. I think it is. Well, like we'll be able to wrap pretty far in. And then suss it out? And if not, we can climb back out. All right. Woo! Woo! Three, two, one, dropping. is pretty precarious i might try and climb back out and begin building an anchor to repel okay well i'm about to start climbing up No, I think I'm going to find a spot for us to repel through the choke. Um, I'll keep you updated. If I can't find that, then I will climb back up to the top. I am at the top of the line right now, and Paul reached a point in the line where there's a choke. So he's building a rappel station and I'm gonna go ride down to him with the rope on my bag. And we're gonna wrap down probably through this spicy zone and then uh, hopefully hop back on our board and skis and ride it all the way to the ground. All right, Paul, I'm uh, ready to drop. Copy that, I am out of the Copy, dropping in three. Right now, things aren't really going as planned. I'm holding my ice axe completely wrong and self-arresting took way longer than it should have in this situation. Here is the proper way to hold an ice axe. I've ridden with an ice axe many times before but actually never had to use it to self-arrest. So if there's anything I've learned from this situation, it's that you need to practice with your gear and learn how to use it properly. I'm very lucky that nothing bad happened and that I was able to walk away and learn from this experience. Now back to the video. Fuck. That's fucked. No, and it's steeper than I expected too. Like down to there. Yeah, you made the right call. Yeah, you made the right call. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. I was like, huh, it's gotta be fucking bad if he's not deciding to go down. Holy shit, my heart's racing. Thanks, dude. So it's one thing looking at it from down there and up there. It's like, oh, that looks chill. Then you're on it and it's, 100%. No joke. <laughs> yeah. Is your rope going to reach down there, doubled over? I think so. I think it'll at least get us past the choke. Yeah, I think so. That looks solid. Damn, dude. I just fucking slid on my ass down that whole thing. 
Well, snow conditions are confirmed, really shitty. We got Paul over here hammering in some batons. And we're gonna try and make our way safely through that choke right there. The snow is wavy, gravy, and icy, so it makes it, it makes it really hard to hold an edge. I dropped in and immediately fell on my ass and slid and had to self-arrest with my ice axe, which is never the best situation to be in. Yeah, wait till you see where my ski track side slipping stops. Oh man. It was like, I was flexing with not even my whole ski on the slope. It was like tip and tail were holding me up. That's what it looks like. I'm looking at it right there, there's like cuts on either side. One of those moments of like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Almost down there. All right, see you, dude. See ya. <sighs> That's good. Fuck yeah. Yeah, we're past the crux. That was the crux right there. Yeah. Although today didn't quite go as planned, there are a few takeaways that proved to be very valuable. Number one, match terrain choices to the conditions. The sun was forecasted to come out and soften the snow. When it didn't, we should have bailed to more mellow terrain. We left ourselves with a thin margin for error. Number two, be better at scouting and gaining information on the line. Climbing it from the bottom up, we would have seen the conditions we missed from far away. Number three, have an escape plan on consequential lines. It was a relatively easy approach to the top one that could only be done without equipment for technical lines. We only had the gear because we thought we may have needed to rappel into the top of the line. We're both very glad to come out from this adventure safe and with a greater sense of humility for these places that we love to play in. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> Made it, survived. Oh, wow. I can't believe we tried to ski that. <laughs> That's so fucked. <laughs>